It's okay, guys, we're staying inside. Nothing bad can possibly happen indoors, right? Oh, for crying out loud. Marvel Comics is back in the media's limelight with their brand new take on the new Warriors comic series. A new generation of diverse superheroes is here. With their latest lineup, incorporating diversity into comic books and any kind of fiction to be honest has always proven a challenge. A common complaint is that Marvel and DC Comics tend to swap out their legacy players for diverse takes on them, which mean that these characters are really just the extension of somebody else's legacy. The common reasonable response is just make new characters. If you want to represent different demographics not previously represented in this medium before, make brand new characters for them. Characters with their very own legacies that can fulfill their very own destinies without being an extension of somebody else. Well, Marvel has done just that in creating a set of brand new superheroes designed to appeal to the young adolescents, teenagers, whatever of today, representing demographics unseen before in Marvel Comics. With the new newly announced lineup of the new warriors. So starting off we have Trailblazer, an ordinary teen scooped up into the world of superheroics. She has a special backpack, which is actually like a window to a pocket dimension. It's bigger on the inside and nobody knows how big. And with that she can pull out random objects to use during crime fighting. But it's not something she always has control of. She claims that God gave her this power, but not the God you're thinking of. She doesn't see herself as a superhero, but she always wants to help people. People. And she's rising up because Kamala's law has been put into effect, which forbids any superheroes under 21 from superheroing, I guess. She also happens to be a little bit more on the plus side end of things. Now, to be fair, Trailblazer is one that's done a bit better because they haven't made her entire superhero identity to be built around the fact that she's fulfilling kind of a representative place in the Marvel Universe. You'll know what I mean in a bit. Her power of being able to obtain random objects that could be useful in battle, though, awfully similar to one of the powers that Miraculous Ladybug has. And that backpack of her sounds a little bit Narnia-y, a little bit TARDIS-y. Sounds like a number of different things, but I mean, it is hard to come up with original ideas these days, so uh, let's just move on to the next one. And I think this one is more supposed to appeal to my kind of demographic. Screen time. He loves memes, he loves the internet, and he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. Excuse me a second. What the fuck?! And now he has the power to Google anything immediately, as well as, well, living basically in VR. Fuck! Here's a little quote from the Marvel press release. The word screen time is only ever used in a sort of restrictive sense, and because we're doing a story about teenage rebels, a lot of the names are about teens fighting against labels that are put on them. So with screen time, we really like the idea that he has infinite screen time. I don't get it. Where Where is the pun? Where, where's the joke here? Aha, uh -huh. well, his name is Screen Time because he has a lot of screen time. I mean, I might be wrong here, but I've only ever heard anyone use the word screen time in reference to how much screen time like an actor or something gets in a movie. For example, Spider-Man gets dick all screen time in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm a guy that uses screens a lot. I guess you could call me a guy that gets a lot of screen time. I've never had the label screen time. I've never once had an adult call me screen time. What is the label here? Sorry, but this is fucking embarrassing. Next up, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna put that for last because we're gonna save the best for last here. So let's move on over to be negative. Get it? Because it's like being negative, right? He embraces the fact that he's so edgy and so goth, but also he's kind of a vampire and ah, <laughs> I see what you did there. Be negative is also a blood type. You fuck. He's a teenage living vampire much like Michael Morbius. But here's a little kawinky dink. He also was exposed to the blood of Michael Morbius while he was a child. During a serious medical procedure. He is also obsessed with like 2000s and 90s music. And his catchphrase is, the world is a vampire and so am I. We're only a little ways into this and just like, is this a joke? Is this the CW? This isn't representation so far. This is stereotypes. This is patronizing. I can see why they led with Trailblazer. She's definitely the best one so far. And then we have the ones who have really pissed everybody off. Some of which because how much of a misrepresentation this is so far, and others of which because we don't want this particular demographic to be represented in anything ever. But we swear we're not transphobic. Meet Snowflake and Safe Space. 
I'm out. Do I really need to explain this one any further? They are psychic twins. Snowflake has the cryokinetic ability to materialize snowflake-shaped projectiles for throwing. And Safe Space is able to make force fields, which he can't use on himself, but only to protect others. Safe Space has the defensive ability, Snowflake has the offensive ability. Also, Snowflake is Marvel's very first non-binary superhero. Marvel's very first non-binary superhero. And their name is Snowflake. Fuck! Now I'm gonna be real, I don't really have much of a dog in this race here. I am not non-binary, nor am I trans. I get what they were trying to do with the name here was similar to what they were trying to do with Screen Time, where they take a label that's been thrown at them in a negative context and use it as like a badge of honor. And I have seen people kind of do that in real life on social media and stuff. Comic books are an escapism though, and like when you pick up a comic book, do you really want to be reminded of a label that you're probably sick to death of? But this is like, this is Marvel's first non-binary, and their entire shtick is that they throw snowflake-shaped projectiles at people, and that they are called Snowflake. Just like, where is, where is the subtlety? A non-binary or a transgender person wouldn't necessarily make their gender identity part of their superhero persona. It's not like Captain America was called Captain Straight Man Guy. It's not like Spider-Man's name was the prepubescent web squirt straight teen, whose superpower was just kind of jizzing all over the place. Although, my point is making Marvel's very first non-binary superhero a character whose entire theme is based around a stigma that I'm 98% certain everybody's sick of, and I'm 100% certain is unwarranted. Matt Murdock is a blind lawyer who spends his nights fighting crime as the Disabler. With, With his, his incredible, incredible telekinetic, telekinetic abilities, abilities Professor, Professor Charles, Charles Xavier, Xavier is, is Professor, Professor He Legs, legs no, no Work. work. He, he has, has the, the amazing, amazing ability, ability to, to summon, summon disable, disable parking, parking permits, permits and, and throw them at his oppressors. oppressors. Now joking aside, here's the reality of the situation. A guy like me is not necessarily going to understand the importance of representation. Why? Because I've been represented my entire life. This is not a void or a burden I have ever had to live with. Behind this animated dog avatar is a white straight guy. And we got dozens of those in fiction. I wouldn't want to experience the void and the burden that other people have to live with because they are going unrepresented. Sure, they can relate to the likes of Spider-Man and Iron Man, but there's a certain level that those characters don't get to share with them. And that's why it's important. There's room enough on my plate for everybody to have a slice of the pie. That that metaphor doesn't work. I am probably going to get a little bit of flack for this here, but I sometimes write scripts, and I sometimes write short films, and sometimes those get made. I made a bunch of short films, I aired them at Christmas time, and most of the time, the main characters, most if not all, tend to be white straight guys. I do not go out of my way to include trans people, or non-binary people, or LGBTQ people for that matter. Because we're all people, and we're all equal, but we're not the same, we've had different experiences, we live with different things from day to day. I couldn't possibly know the first thing of what it is like to live as someone who's a part of the LGBTQ community. It wouldn't necessarily be representation. Now, if I had someone come up to me and say, hey, do you reckon you could maybe include a trans character in your story? I would say absolutely, but this has to be in collaboration with someone who can understand that perspective a little better. Because I won't know how to represent that demographic on my own. Because I am not that demographic. And I think what's happened here is that Marvel have had the well-intentioned concept of a more inclusive lineup for the new warriors that a lot of kids of all different backgrounds can relate to. And that's a really special thing. But what I think has happened is that this concept has been put in the hands of creative staff who just don't get it. I'm sure they meant well, but I don't think that this was necessarily the right way to go. I think it would have been a better idea to let some young people get their start in the comics industry. Have non-binary people make Marvel's first non-binary character. There is already a stigma against people outside of the straightforward male and female genders when it comes to the workplace. So if they want to be inclusive, why not actually be inclusive and hire people that match the demographics they want to appeal to. And that's just kind of my two cents, my perspective on this. Uh, if there's any folks in the comments below that will have a better perspective than I do, please do feel free to contribute it. Well, I guess the new lineup of X-Men can't be any worse. What is more now than Zoomers? <laughs> Anything you want to know about these characters, Vita has uh, thought about it already. One of them has a TikTok, 
One of them has a fitness Insta. One of them uh, is basically the moderator for the mutant subreddit. <laughs> one of them is a cosplayer uh, and the other one makes mutant music. This is ridiculous. Marvel, just call time on this, rethink your strategy and come back with something better, seriously. Just develop it more, put more thought into it, just anything. This is just, this is not working. What do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you head over to channelpup.net, where we've got a blog page called Dr. Blogtopus, but as well as that, you can also buy merch, such as this awful t-shirt. But if you want to be a part of the super fun kennel club, why not hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below, you can check out the links to my Patreon and my Twitter. I think that would be pretty sweet for both of us. What do you say, champ? But in all seriousness, now thank you so much for watching my fellow home dogs have a great day because you and i both know you've earned it i'll catch you next time that's a cute outfit did your husband give it to you because you could get a way better costume from zentai zone check out their range of custom made tailored superhero costumes ridiculously good quality value and customization link is in the description below as well as my coupon code channel pup where you can get a discount off of your purchase and while you're at it why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy dan from new blood dan's workshop you can contact him via the link in the description below seriously guys you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.